Fast bowling is one of the coolest movements in sport. Alongside things like dunking a basketball, spiking a volleyball, and pole vaulting, the speed and the intensity of fast bowling makes it a really exciting movement to watch. But the combination of extreme joint positions, ground reaction forces in excess of five times body weight, and reaching ground reaction forces in just 45 milliseconds makes fast bowling one of the sport movements that really requires a good foundation of strength and conditioning. In this video, we're going to talk about strength conditioning for cricket and specifically for improving fast bowling. I evaluated the research around cricket training and fast bowling specifically, as well as common injury sites and training techniques to optimize performance for fast bowlers. In this video, I'm going to give you a lot of training tips, and if you want to learn even more after the video, you can download my five free key drills to improving cricket performance in the description below, and I'll also tell you about my 12-week comprehensive cricket training program. So to start off, we want to talk about the two most common injury sites in fast bowlers, and that would be the lower back and the shoulder. The very intense and fast movement of fast bowling in cricket leads to ground reaction forces in excess of five times body weight that are achieved in just 45 milliseconds very, very quickly. That said, good training and good body mechanics and movement patterns can help us attenuate forces through the body. This means that we can absorb forces, decelerate our limbs when we're doing these intense sport movements, and reduce risk of injury. What the overall body of research shows is that high forces do not directly correlate with increased injury risk. What's more important is frequency and exposure to those high forces. Some things that the research articles have shown is that fast bowlers should avoid bowling spells of greater than 10 overs to minimize risk of acute lower back pain. Furthermore, consistently keeping your bowling workload to two and a half days per week or less has been shown to reduce risk of injury. The principle here is that we don't want dramatic spikes in our workload or the number of overs that we're bowling. So spreading out the workload and avoiding big spikes is a really key determinant in reducing risk of injury. Furthermore, strength training can really be beneficial here because it will increase our ability to tolerate higher workloads especially if we can accommodate to higher volumes of training in the off season, we can reduce the risk of injury as we get into these sport movements in season. This is why cricketers who have a good foundation of strength and good body mechanics and movement awareness tend to be more robust and strong and not just perform better with faster throws and more accuracy, but also decrease risk of injury long term and throughout the season. It's important to understand that there's not one or two exercises that you can do to prevent injuries. There are a lot of factors that combine to increase or decrease injury risk in regard to your training, so you need a well-structured program. That program may include exercises like general lower body strengthening, back strengthening, unilateral strength exercises, and for the shoulder, you may see specific exercises to work on internal rotation range of motion, external rotation strength to decelerate the arm. There are a lot of different options in terms of individual exercises, so it's important not to look for the one or two exercises that are going to keep you from getting hurt, but instead to create a good progressive program that's progressing you on each exercise that you need to build strength on to overall improve your mechanics and reduce your risk of injury. Strength and conditioning for fast bowling is more than just picking exercises. It's really important how much volume we do with that in terms of how many sets and reps we're doing, as well as when we're doing those exercises, whether it's off season, pre season, or in season, right around competition. One mistake that a lot of cricketers make is doing the same number of sets and reps and about the same exercises, whether they're in the off season or whether they're in season. What this research article showed is that it actually really matters what exercises we're doing off season versus in season because doing a lot of volume of resistance training with, for example, the protocol that they use, which is three sets of 10 of exercises like leg press, chest press, row, lunges, and tricep extensions led to decreased performance in cricket for 24 to 48 hours after training. They specifically showed that that resistance training protocol led to slower 15 meter sprint time by about 4%, reduced vertical jump by about 7%, reduced ball speed by about 3%, reduced bowling accuracy, and reduced run up speed by about 3.5%. Now that's not to say that resistance training is bad, because long term it will actually increase all of those performance metrics, but in the short term it's going to decrease those metrics. So it's important that you have a good training structure and you know when you should do each exercise and for how much volume. 
Generally, when we're thinking of things like three sets of 10, three sets of 12, and big compound movements like double leg exercises, like leg presses, squats, chest press, and tricep extension, and things like that, we're generally gonna want to focus those more towards the off season whenever, even if it slows you down a little bit, that's all right because you're building strength and you're building muscle mass and you're building muscle definition that will later translate to your performance. But whenever it comes to the preseason and in season around your game time, that's when we typically want to use lower volumes of training. In my full 12 week cricket strength conditioning program, for example, I have three blocks of training, a base hypertrophy block of training, which is designed to be used off season, and then you transition into a power strength program for four weeks, and then you transition into a power speed program in season, which has the lowest volume and very fast movements that aren't going to impair your performance. In fact, power and speed movements performed at low volumes with high bar speed can actually have a post-activation potentiation response to increase these performance metrics, like vertical jump and run speed and throwing speed and bowling accuracy. So the important thing to think about whenever you're designing your strength conditioning program and figuring out what to do is that you want to use the appropriate volume of training for the phase of training that you're in. If you're noticing that your performance is impaired by the training that you're doing, you may be making a training mistake. For example, not training power and speed close to your competition. What this article showed was that the run-up speed was considered essential to optimize ball speed and accuracy due to the combined transfer of momentum and summation of segmental velocities through the kinetic chain of the bowling action. This means that if you're making errors with your strength and conditioning program, it could be impacting your speed as well as the accuracy of your bowling. If you want to improve your cricket performance with really good advanced strength and conditioning training, the first step is to download the five key drills to improving your cricket performance in the description below. And if you want a structured training plan to significantly increase your cricket performance, to hit more fours and sixes, score more runs, and bowl faster while decreasing your risk of injury with really good structured training, then you should check out my 12-week cricket performance program in the description below. I worked with another physical therapist and strength conditioning coach, Zach Evzal, and he's a really smart guy. The two of us have been working on this for months to put together a really great comprehensive program for cricket training that includes dynamic warm-ups and contrast training and periodization and the structure that you need to actually optimize cricket performance. The program also comes with supplemental educational material to teach you about what you're doing with your training. Every single exercise in the program has an exercise technique video to show you exactly the right technique for each movement. Furthermore, to ensure that you're actually making progress, we have 11 performance tests that you'll do at the start and the end of the program so that way you can see exactly how much progress you're making with your strength, your conditioning, your speed, your mobility, and your power. So go ahead and check the link in the description below to learn more about this 12-week program and see if it's a good fit for you. I'll also include a link in the description below to the Cricket Strength Conditioning Group, which I encourage you to join. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.